You, like Senator Davis, fought to prevent the $5.4 billion in education cuts in 2011. Some of that's been restored, not all of it. And I think I'm correct, you have said that you, one of your top priorities is restoring the money that was cut. Where do you get that money? Where do we find and make up that money? And can you do it without a tax increase? We are in a great age of resources in our state of oil and gas. We're gonna have over $8.4 billion in the rainy day fund. Even after the allocation of the water funds that were approved mm -hmm. last November, and hopefully of transportation. the transportation funds that will be. But our revenue stream is been great. In fact, the comptroller has just uh, notified the legislature that she was off, that we're gonna have, off in her estimates, that we're gonna have $5 billion more at least coming into this next legislative session left over. Surplus. The surplus. We we didn't need to cut that harshly in, in 2011. Fact of the matter is those cuts were drastic. 11,000 teachers lost their jobs. Over 8,000 class size waivers. And we have heard parents. We have heard the school administrators. And we know what a judge has recently ruled. So I believe that we could do this in the available revenues but you gotta make education your priority. First thing, we ought to fully fund the $200 million that were cut from pre-kindergarten programs in 2011. It's got measurable outcomes, and we know that those little ones are developing those learning patterns. We need to absolutely do that. And then, as we look at what the judge has said on school finance of this system being inequitable, inefficient, and uh, basically inadequate, that means there's not enough to meet the expectations of, of student performance in the classroom. It's not fair and it's not working. Education should be our priority.